coming to you live from the Rocky Mountains. Precalculus Math 11. Dots. 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 Today, solving problems using quadratic equations. As I watch some of you guys do problem solving in class, I get a little bit concerned about the lack of method and the lack of structuring in your working. So I wanted to take a break here to just look at how do we solve problems. From this point forward, it becomes extremely important that you use a rigorous method for problem solving. A guess and check method is really only good for understanding the context of the problem, but it isn't a good substitute for an algebraic solution. And whereas some of you can probably read through a problem and generate an equation, I often find that by the time you've solved that equation, you no longer know what your variables represented in the first place, and therefore you don't know how to answer the original problem. So I propose using the following four-step process. Number one, declare your variable including units. Number two, write a quadratic equation using your variable. Three, solve that quadratic equation with any method. And four, interpret those solutions to give an answer to the original problem. Now sometimes it can be hard going from step one to step two in that translation phase from English into math. So it might be worth doing a little bit of practice on just that skill of translating. For instance, write algebraic statements for each of the following. Hit pause now, give these a try, and the answers will magically appear in... With that out of the way, let's do an entire problem now. Jerry cuts half of a rectangular lawn that measures 40 by 30. He mows strips of equal width around the perimeter to leave a smaller rectangle inside that has half the area of the entire lawn. How wide are the strips that Jeff cuts? So I would start out by drawing a rectangular lawn and showing that it's 40 meters by 30 meters. Then I would draw in the inner rectangle whose area is half of the outer rectangle. I don't know the width of those strips, so why not call them W for width of mowed grass in meters or some such similar description? but make sure to also include the units for your own sake to make sure you've got everything right at the end. Now what does this leave for dimensions on the inner rectangle? Well if the whole length here is 40 then the resulting piece here is going to be 40 minus 2w and likewise here vertically if it was 30 along the right hand side this is now going to be 30 minus 2w. The area of the inner triangle is 40 minus 2w times 30 minus 2w. And this has to be equal to half of the area of the original entire rectangle, which is 40 by 30. Now we've got our quadratic equation. We've taken care of steps 1 and steps 2. Let's tidy this up. Let's expand, simplify, move all the terms to one side, and then look at how can we solve this equation. So now that I've got this equation simplified, what method do I want to use to solve it? Well, my preference is that if I can factor, I want to do so. I think I can factor this. Two numbers that multiply to 150 but add up to negative 35. I think this is going to go as w and w, obviously, all equal to 0, minus 30, and minus 5. So we've got out of here w is equal to 30 or w is equal to 5. Now, if you don't like factoring, you could use quad formula, you could graph it, I guess you could complete the square. But we've got these two solutions now to the quadratic equation. We've taken care of three of the four steps. 
Now I have to interpret the solutions that I've gotten in terms of the original question. Is w equal to 30 or w equal to 5? Sometimes both solutions make sense. What does w mean? w is the width of the strip of lawn mowed by Jeffrey. Is it possible that Jeff mowed a strip of 30 meters off of each side of the original lawn? No, doesn't make sense. So if you tell me that the answer here is 30, I'm not going to give you full marks. We have to be smart enough here to realize that W actually has to be between 0 and 15, half of this shortest side. So how wide of a strip did he mow off? He mowed off a strip of 5 from each side. We need to reject 30. How wide are the strips that Jeff cuts? Strips are 5 meters wide. Problem number two. One day, Thomas the Tank Engine and Toe Mater meet at the Tubby Tronic Superdome. After enjoying some Teletubby custard, they depart for home. Mater travels north at an average speed of 60 km per hour, and Thomas heads west at an average speed of 40 km per hour. If Mater leaves at noon, and Thomas leaves two hours later, at what time will they be 680 km apart? Well, again, a little sketch here might be a useful thing for us to do. Let's first draw where they're starting out here at the Tubbytronic Superdome and Mater traveling north at 60 kilometers per hour and Thomas traveling west at 40 kilometers per hour. And the question talks about at what time will they be 680 kilometers apart? That, of course, is the distance between them like this, north and west, making a right angle. We've got a right triangle question here and we're dealing with the lengths of the sides of the right triangle. Let's let t equal time in hours that Thomas has traveled and therefore t plus 2 will be the time in hours that Mater has traveled. So what is Thomas's total distance traveled? Since we know that speed is distance over time, we've got distance then equal to speed times time, and therefore Thomas's distance traveled is 40 times t kilometers. Mater's distance then is 60 times t plus 2. Again, he's traveled for an extra two hours on top of what Thomas has traveled, and we can tidy this up to be 60 t plus 120 kilometers. A squared plus b squared equals c squared, the distance between them. Scroll this up a little bit. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 40t squared plus 60 times 60t plus 120 squared equals 680 squared, their distance apart. I've got a quadratic equation here. I need to expand this and simplify it. I want to reduce this equation because these numbers are ridiculous. First thing I can see here is that everything will divide by 100 reducing down to 52, 52t squared plus 144t minus 4,484. The next thing, I think they'll all divide by 4. I'm going to try this and see if I can reduce a little bit more. Now I need to solve this quadratic equation. I could do this by factoring, graphing, quadratic formula, completing the square. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this by using the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Of course, in this case, we're not actually dealing with x. We're dealing with t. So t equals negative b. What are my values? a equals 13, b equals 36, c equals negative 1120. Substitute these in and calculate. So 
when I substitute these values in, a, b, and c, I calculate here that t is equal to 8 or it's equal to negative 10.769. What's the answer to the question? I need to go back and check again. What is the question? The question is, if Mater leaves at noon and Thomas leaves two hours later, at what time will they be 680 kilometers apart? Now, if you haven't defined what t is equal to, then you might be tempted to say that it happens at 8 o'clock. Hopefully you're wise enough to reject this negative answer as not making any sense. They're not going backwards in time. You might say that the answer is 8 o'clock. But remember, we defined what t is. t is the time in hours that Thomas has traveled. t plus 2 is the time that Mater has traveled. Mater left at noon. Thomas left two hours later. If Thomas has traveled for eight hours and he left two hours later than Mater, that means Thomas has been traveling since two o'clock. At what time are they 680 kilometers apart? They're 680 kilometers apart at 10 p.m. Well, good luck with the rest of the questions in your problem set. We'll take up the rest of them in class and see how you did on them. No sweat, no stress it. Until next time, keep your pencils sharp. Dance!